everybody. Welcome to the SIP Shelter in Place series on the STIR podcast brought to you by Gazelle Media. I'm your host, Trish Moiko-Tobin, and I am joined by Debbie Baldwin, our resident entertainment guru, sitcom producer, and author of the newly released Illicit Intent, the sequel to the gripping romantic thriller, False Front. Deb, congratulations on this new book. It looks great and I cannot wait to read it. Thank you. It's, um, I'm very proud of it. It's got a lot of, um, there's like a historical reference to an infamous art theft in the story. So it was a lot of fun to research the book. And, you know, of course the romance is always fun to write and hopefully to read. So, um, but I think it, it, it's worth your time to take a look at illicit intent. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. And that whole thing about the art heist, you, you had me there. And then where is the book available, Deb? Um, ev- all online booksellers. So that's Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Google, Apple, any, any place you buy books online. Should all right. Have- So people shouldn't have any trouble finding it. Again, the new book by Debbie Baldwin is called Illicit Intent. All right, Debbie. So this week, we are setting our sights on a singular virtuoso of film. He is dreamy, he is dazzling, and he also happens to be a damn fine actor. And we are talking about the great Denzel Washington. Um, you know, it's funny when we decided that we were going to do the best Denzel Washington films, I went on the internet movie database and checked, you know, his filmography to choose. And the man has made 60 some odd movies and it was extremely difficult (laughs) to narrow down the list. I bet it was. And I'm glad it was you doing it because Mr. Washington holds the record for the most Oscar wins and nominations for a black actor. He won the Academy Award for best actor, the big one in 2001 for training day, which notably is not on Debbie's list. Deb, tell us then how you went about selecting your your top Denzel Washington movies. Well, and training day to be sure was an Oscar worthy performance. It, it speaks more to the quality of all of his films than disparaging Training Day to say that it did not make the list. But as a film, it was not one of my favorites. And, you know, we can talk about the Oscar controversy of Training Day, you know, till I could talk about it till I'm blue in the face. There's a lot of weird planetary alignment yes. with. Um, obviously that was a very controversial year. A Beautiful Mind swept the Academy Awards. Ron Howard directed the film based on the Princeton economics professor, John Nash and his battle with mental illness. Um, uh, it, it won best movie, best director, best supporting actor, best supporting, a uh, best actress, best supporting actor. And Everything then the best actor. Crow, <laughs> who really was, a poise to win another, I think it would have been his third Academy Award, had had a horrible year in the press. He had made a scene at the British Academy Awards. He had had a temper, a violent outburst at a hotel in New York City uh, when over, a, he couldn't reach his wife or there was a phone issue and he ended up throwing the phone and right to, you know, like a supermodel had a big (laughs) blowout and the Academy punished him and he did not get the votes to win the Oscar for that role, um, which was a shame because you think that they really should be voting for the performances and not the personal lives of these actors. But, you know, when you there's a certain amount of campaigning and politicizing that goes on with all of these awards and he blew it. And I do tend to agree with you about training day, although it was enjoyable to watch and it's, you know, Denzel at his, I mean, his acting was on showcase for this movie, definitely. But again, with the range of his work, I agree with you that there are better Denzel movies that definitely belong on this list. Yeah. 
So, and then regardless of what you think your top Denzel movie is, really, this is a timely celebra uh, celebration of Mr. Washington. You know, we are anticipating the release later this month of his new movie called The Little Things, described as a neo-noir crime thriller, one of our favorite genres, Deb, um, starring not only Denzel, but also another Academy Award winning actor, Rami Malek. So... Um, yes. And this it. movie has that kind of, I feel like it's going to be sort of training day meets, you know, along came a spider, like he's got these, all of these elements of other great gripping Denzel Washington movies kind of all put together in one. So I have very high hopes for this film. So we'll see. I can't wait because from what I understand, you know, um, this movie is about Denzel is a deputy sheriff and Rami Malek is a detective and they're clashing um, pretty much the entire movie. And I know that Denzel loves a good, yeah. you know, clash on screen and between these two Academy Award winning actors. And Rami Malek won the Academy Award for his portrayal of Freddie Mercury. Yeah. Um, so yes, we've got some very, very, a lot of talent in this film. <laughs> yes, we sure do. We sure do. All right, so going back to our list. First on our list, Debbie, is one of the earliest film roles for Denzel Washington. He was in a supporting role for this movie um, that was directed by Canadian director Norman Jewison, who most notably directed the movie In the Heat of the Night. Um, this movie was adapted from a Charles Fuller off-Broadway play in which Denzel also starred in, and he reprised his role as Private First Class Peterson in the movie. And we are talking about the movie, A Soldier's Story. Yes, and the play by Charles Fuller, which was called A Soldier's Play, yes. um, was a Pulitzer Prize winning piece of work. So, you know, a lot of quality going into this film. It is the story of um, a World War II, uh, investigation into the death of a soldier on a military base in Louisiana. And um, the, it, it, this film, I would describe it as brave because the thing I love about this movie is there is no good and evil drawn on racial lines. There are bad guys who are African-American. There are bad guys who are white. There are good guys who are African-American. There are good guys who are white. They're characters and they're each kind of judged on their face, not, you know, as a group, which is really a, such a valuable message in our society. Um, the film was nominated for three Academy Awards. Denzel Washington, as you mentioned, has a small but critical role in the yeah. film. Um, as one of the soldiers on the base. And it's just a really interesting examination of military life, of politics, of racial tensions. There's so many layers to it. You can see why the play won the Pulitzer Prize. It's a great film. And while this is one of Denzel Washington's early roles and it's not, he doesn't have a ton of screen time, he makes an incredible impression in his role. Oh, apparently he makes quite an impact. Um, even back then, according to the director, uh, Norman Jewison, he was already showing what he was capable of bringing to the big screen. Uh, Norman Jewison wrote uh, in his autobiography, he said of the rising star, quote, the camera loved Washington. He was intelligent, rebellious, totally confident, and spectacularly talented. He was so confident, he often thought he knew more than the director, but he watched and learned. And so that's um, the director's impression of a young Denzel Washington back then. So I wanted to mention, there's a scene in this movie where it's a um, like a, a parade of, of military. And this movie was, the play was set in uh, Louisiana, but was for, uh, filmed entirely in Arkansas. And back then, uh, Bill Clinton was governor. And the governor actually visited the set uh, during filming. And he was instrumental in uh, securing the participation of the Arkansas National Guard in full regalia um, to participate in that grand parade scene um, 
Otherwise, the filmmakers did not have any money to hire all those extras, didn't have any money in the budget. So Bill Clinton, you know, making things happen in Arkansas. And um, as a result, we've got this film. That's great. I love that story. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. way better than Donald Trump visiting. <laughs> <laughs> what was our story from the other week? Yeah. Oh, Donald Trump as the uh, male Alexis Colby. Right. And <laughs> And prior to that, um, trying to ask date. Emma Thompson out on a date. Yes. So, yes, yeah. So totally. this, yeah, I like this story better. <laughs> All right. Our next movie Boy, is... Who knew there'd be a day when Bill Clinton was like the shining star of our president stories? <laughs> oh my gosh. Just, just wait a few more days, Deb. We might be talking about a completely different thing. Right, we meant to edit this whole thing out because it's getting <laughs> so out of control, but... Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. We're going to move on to 1987 and a film that has Denzel Washington star as Steve Biko, the Black South African activist leader um, during apartheid in the country in the 1970s. And that is the movie Cry Freedom. Now, it's interesting to me, these early films of Denzel Washington's because you can tell he was a shining star immediately as he emerged and he is given such incredible projects early on the, this first list of films from the late 80s and early 90s are all impactful powerful films right that he was a very very lucky man to be able to you know be cast and you know starting out in his career in such impactful films. So Cry Freedom, um, he plays, uh, as you said, the South Steve African Biko. activist, Steve Biko. Um, and it's a true story. I don't know if there's, there's spoilers involved here, but I won't say what happens in the film. Kevin <laughs> Klein plays a white journalist who, while he doesn't necessarily align with Biko's activism, is supportive of the right to be an activist, if that makes sense. Yes. And it's just the story of Kevin Klein's character investigating the way the South African apartheid era government uh, cracks down on any sort of activism or, you know, upheaval within the very tenuous system that's on the brink of collapse. So it's a riveting story again it's sad and tragic and hideous to look at the at south africa's you know very painful history of apartheid and this though is one of those stories that had largely been untold i mean when you discuss apartheid you know people think of the you know you think of nelson mandela or you think of you know more publicized events in the steve biko um what happened to him was a linchpin. It was definitely a catalyst that moved South, South Africa towards a, a freer society and government. And so it's, it's, it's a great movie. The acting's incredible. The story is gripping yeah. and it's also an important film. Yes, definitely. And, you know, um, I think it also shows his, intuition maybe um in choosing such roles that are yeah. so compelling um you know such as the role here in cry freedom so this next film really begins a string of acting accolades and nominations for denzel if you didn't notice him before you definitely will notice him now um, for this film he was nominated for best supporting actor for the Oscar and also the Golden Globes and that is the film glory from 1989 and he did win. He won. Supporting actor for yeah. um, for his role as Private Trip. Yes, and Glory is his best film, in my opinion. It's an absolutely beautiful film from top to bottom about the first African American regiment in the United in the U.S. Civil War. Uh, it stars Matthew Broderick yes. alongside Denzel Washington. Um, the score, you cannot ignore the music in this film, which oh is performed goodness. by the Boys Choir of Harlem and is absolutely beautiful. 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 Um, and it is this 
you know, the Civil War movies are always sort of hideous. They're, it's a terrible time in our nation's history, uh, you know, and it, this is no exception. It's, it's, there's tragedy and there's racism in, you know, in such a different level than we experience now. It's, and, but the acting is incredible. The story is fantastic. And um, it's, again, this boiling down this issue of race to individuals and these characters and what they're made of, what their moral fiber is and how, you know, it, it, it's just a beautiful story and it's incredibly acted and it's, yeah. and, and it's grabs you from the first moment until the end. So it's, Glory is a great, great film. I agree. I mean, war movies are, you know, just the base of the basis of the movie being a war movie. It has already the poignancy built in, but then if you add the compelling acting, you know, of Denzel Washington and Broderick and all the other cast members, you've got yourself a film like, like Glory. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. So our next film has Denzel front and center in the title role. Um, this film was directed and co-written by Spike Lee, and that is the film Malcolm X from 1992. Now, here's something interesting. The director of A Soldier Story, uh, Norman, Jewison, Norman Jewison, was originally tapped to direct Malcolm X, but this film was mired in controversy from the get-go. He, Malcolm X was a very controversial figure in at black communities in white communities, in Muslim communities, in Christian communities. I mean, you name it. And he, uh, you know, pushed people's buttons. So, but the uproar over the fact that it was a white director was too much for the studio. And they then tapped Spike Lee to take over. Spike Lee was among those leading the charge in terms of how dare you have a white director um, direct a film about Malcolm X? Yes, and and it, <laughs> it's annoying in the sense that restricting an artist based on race, no matter what direction it's coming from, I oppose. You know, it's it's unfair to me, but I understand that with the Spike Lee's argument that it would take an African American director to understand the cultural implications of someone as complicated as Malcolm X. So, you know, everyone's got their opinion on this, but um, so moving forward with Spike Lee, who rewrote a lot of the film based on his own interpretation of Malcolm X, which is okay. Spike Lee's a smart guy. He did a lot of research. He had Malcolm X's widow consult on the film. I think, bad, so yeah. I think all of his adaptations came from a place of research and intelligence. So. Which worked out for the film. It which, did, I think. Yeah. We don't know what it would have been before. <laughs> but, um, but it, it definitely. You know, and this film out. was destined to get hit from all sides. So it was a very brave thing to actually make the film, which also starred Angela Bassett and Delroy Lindo and chronicles Malcolm X's very checkered life. Um, he was a criminal, uh, admittedly was in jail, found Islam in prison, um, converted, became an activist, had issues with the Islamic nation, it, 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 it's, he was a man with very strong opinions about race. And I think Spike Lee does a nice job carrying that thread through consistently throughout the film, despite like whatever organizations Malcolm X or Malcolm Little as he was born right. um, is advocating, he pushes this thread of, Mal of Malcolm X's um, disdain of racism throughout the whole film, which is a nice message in a very controversial world. Got so. it. Yes, I agree. And I also like the fact that, you know, the approach was to really see Malcolm X as the person 
um, in his narrative. I mean, it even touched upon his younger years growing up. And I found this interesting, you know, how's this for film prep, Deb? So Denzel dove into the role by avoiding eating pork and he attended um, Fruit of Islam meetings to really immerse himself into the role of, of playing Malcolm X. And apparently uh, Malcolm back in the day was a, a pretty fine Lindy Hop dancer. So he learned to Lindy Hop. And he also reportedly was so into the character that he even knew which pair of glasses the real Malcolm X wore on any given day. So that's how he, he was living this world. Um, also notable uh, for this film that it's the first non-documentary and first American film to be given permission to film in Mecca for those scenes that, you know, the ones, those of us who've seen the film, you know, you remember some of those scenes. And also notable for its cameos, Deb, we yeah. have Nelson Mandela, Mandela cameo, Al Sharpton, Al Sharpton, the uh, co-founder of the Black Panther Party, uh, Bobby Seale. Uh, we've got Christopher Plummer as a prison chaplain, which the totally I didn't even <laughs> notice. Um, and also Peter Boyle as a police officer. So a lot of things going on in this film. Yeah. Okay, so our next film is based on a John Grisham novel that came out in 1992. Get this, the film rights were bought before the novel was even completed. How does not, that happen, Deb? Not surprising. Not <laughs> in the wake of A Time to Kill and The Firm. Right. Grisham I, had already written his own ticket at this point, yeah. Oh my gosh, I guess if you're John Grisham, that can happen. Grisham had released a sample from this novel that he was writing and reportedly the movie rights were purchased on the spot. And that is the film, The Pelican Brief, which came out one year after the novel came out in 1993. And now we've, get, now we, we've moved out of uh, Denzel's sort of, his movies up to this point, the, the ones that have really stood out, the ones on this list are all message movies, powerful movies, political movies. Now we get Grisham, which is... Now we're in like blockbuster exactly. territory. Pop the popcorn. <laughs> right. Julia Roberts plays Darby Shaw, who is a law student. And in the wake of the deaths of two US Supreme Court justices, produces a brief for her law school class, theorizing why these two justices of the nine on the court, who would benefit? And yeah. she produces what she what comes to be known as the Pelican Brief. And as it turns out, her theory is correct. So Denzel Washington plays a reporter, Gray Grantham, who teams up with her to investigate this theory of this brief she's written. And, you know, Intrigue ensues. <laughs> Intrigue ensues indeed. And, you know, I just remember seeing this movie and just loving every minute of it. <laughs> every minute. Those and, yeah, and, you want, and, you, and there's no there's no romance in the movie. There's no. no physical romance. There's an attraction between these two characters, which is undeniable. And I think carries over into real life. I think that Julia, I mean, when Julia Roberts, Julia Roberts presented Denzel Washington with the Oscar for Training Day, and I mean, you can just tell that they have true affection for one another off screen. Yes, the effect but, um, is definitely mutual, yes. Yeah, but this is just a great movie from beginning to end. It's the book is great and the movie does it justice. I, I believe so, I believe so. That was a great movie to watch. All right, so to describe this next movie as merely a submarine film, Deb, starring Denzel Washington and Gene Hackman is definitely not gonna do it. You know, we are talking about Crimson Tide from 1995. And I mean, Gene Hackman, <laughs> wow. you, you know, really one of the most, I think, under-recognized actors uh, of his generation. He is spectacular on screen every time. This role in particular, He's not the good guy in the story um, of, an, of a U.S. nuclear sub, the Alabama, that 
um, in the wake of the Cuban Missile Crisis is ordered to fire missiles on a Russian sub and the order is questionable because the communications on the sub have been disrupted. Denzel Washington plays the XO who is trying to stop the missiles from being fired. Gene Hackman is a bit of a hot head commander and wants to fire the missiles and it's a mutiny on this submarine and that's the storyline and it's another just gripping oh my gosh the edge of your seat you're right about gripping um you know really any action thriller starring gene hackman yep sign you're me up. in for a ride and to have these two face off with each other i understand denzel washington himself took this role because he wanted to quote be in there jousting with the master i mean and oh my god he is right about that and their um life positions as you know denzel washington well now this movie is 1995 so denzel washington's been making movies for 10 years gene hackman longer much longer yes um is the the senior and their roles in the film are you know match that it's yes. and it's perfect and the, the, those two cast in those roles is was absolutely genius oh my gosh oh my gosh it makes me want to see it again yeah. I want to Scott see. directs this film. It's fantastic. And, you know, Gene Hackman, again, like if you have, haven't seen the film Behind Enemy Lines, which is, I always say, like, I was joking when I was writing this one down because I'm like, I really must like Gene Hackman in the Navy. Like, I must have some kind of <laughs> naval fantasy. There's nothing wrong with Gene having, Hackman in the um, Navy. Because Behind Enemy Lines with Gene Hackman and Owen Wilson is another fantastic film if, if that, that sort of film appeal, appeals to you. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So one cool thing I found out about this movie is that the US Navy refused to participate in anything to do with this movie because they objected to a few elements. Um, in particular, the, the, just the idea of a mutiny aboard a US vessel. So the filmmakers had to get really creative about um, acquiring the shot of the submarine submerging. So what they did Deb, was they actually went to Pearl Harbor and did a stakeout and yeah. submarines, I kid you not, um, pretty much waiting until a submarine went out to sea. That's and cool. The day finally came, you know, guess what? Just how lucky were they that the actual USS Alabama was the <laughs> one who, who went out to sea. And what they did was they were on a boat and they were also on a helicopter and started filming the Alabama as it made its way out. Um, when the captain of the Alabama got word that there was a film crew hovering about, um, he decided to go under, which is what the film crew wanted because they wanted that scene of the submarine submerging. So they really got what they wanted. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That's really cool. Yes. And as for shooting inside the submarine itself, they got cooperation from the French Navy um, to film in one of their ballistic missile subs. And so those are the interior scenes that we see in the film. Oh, such a great film. Such I a mean, great film. And you know, that sense, all those Hunt for Red October, all those submarine movies, you know, when you're watching it in the theater, you really feel that sense of claustrophobia. That I these, agree, yeah. That these I agree. Must feel. And I think pretty much all of them uh, were released right around that time. There was this really um, thirst for right. submarine movies for some reason. I have to say, this has to be my favorite one out of, yeah. out of all that. And they're all good. That's They're all good. <laughs> They're all good. All right. So we're going to jump to the year 2000 with our next movie. And it is the movie Remember the Titans. And that stars Denzel as Herman Boone, who was a newly hired uh, Black football coach for the high school. And it's about uh, Herman Boone's attempts to integrate the team at T.C. Williams High School in Virginia um, in the early 70s. Yes. In Alexandria, Virginia, it's a true story. It's based on a true story. I, ha I have to wonder how closely it follows the true story because this movie 
is perfect. If you are looking for that, jump out of your seat, cheer and clap. I mean, I saw this the I saw this movie in the theater with one of my best friends, Ira. She and I, it was like watching a real football game. We were laughing at the people around us yelling, run, what you know. <laughs> the football game are going on the quarterbacks you're dropping back into the pocket and passing the ball and people are cheering as if they're watching a football game not a movie oh my gosh that's it's a fun theater so <laughs> fun and the way everything plays out in this film you know there's heartbreak and there's 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 tragedy and there's backstabbing and conniving and good prevails and spoiler alert <laughs> the good guys win it's such a great you it's one of those films when the credits roll you just walk out and think yes like that's that's a movie you know oh gosh and now you're giving me an idea to put you know in a in my must see again list because yeah. wow you're right about that and i think you know speaking of score the score of this movie i think really played a role in how your you know, you had this roller coaster of emotions throughout the film. In fact, um, you know, the score was composed by Trevor Rabin. There's a seven minute track called Titan Spirit is the title of it. It's been used as music for tons of high profile sporting events, including the Olympics, the NBA games, um, you know, at Yankee Stadium. It even was used after Barack Obama's victory speech in 2008. So if you don't know this, piece of music by name you definitely have heard it at one point or another yeah well this is a jerry brockheimer directed Di this is a disney film this is a disney so, film you know family friendly get you know the kids it's 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 friday night lights it's the mighty ducks it's you know everything that's great about a football movie about you know conflict and resolution and you know it's a, it's a real stand-up and cheer film Plus, you have Denzel Washington, and that's what makes it perfect. Perfect, it, perfect. It, and Will Penn <laughs> is fantastic as the assistant coach who was the former head coach, you know, disgruntled about being uh, demoted and poised to be inducted into the high school football coaching hall of fame. And his plans are threatened to be derailed by Boone, the Denzel Washington character, it's, the dynamic is fantastic between those two. Um, Will Patton, another underrated actor too, in my opinion. Um, anyway, it's a great movie. I can't, I can't tell, say it enough. Yes, definitely. Okay, so our next movie um, is from, night, or I'm sorry, 2002, and it stars Denzel Washington in the title role as John Quincy Archibald, or as they call him in this movie, John Q. And Dab, this is the story of a father whose son is in need of a life-saving heart transplant, pretty much the premise of the film. Yeah, and this is a hard hitting film that, you know, Denzel's going back to his activist tendencies and this time taking on the US healthcare system. He is a struggling, blue collar worker whose son is in need of a heart transplant and insurance won't cover it. And the hospital is unsympathetic, really um, sending him home with his son to die, basically. And Denzel's character takes uh, the people in the emergency room hostage, demanding a heart for his son. Now, um, the cast um, is Robert Duvall. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, uh, James Woods is a, is a doctor. Robert Duvall is the hostage negotiator. Ray Liotta is a, the, of course, the bad guy cop. Which is Ray Liotta, <laughs> automatic. <laughs> we're a really bad guy cop here. Wait, let's see what Ray Liotta's doing. Um, so, yeah, and it's just this, great you know i think I, how many times i use the word gripping in this 
podcast. You can pick those roles. Movies. My gosh, yeah. But yeah, it's a real edge of your seat. You, you, I, it, movies like this fill me with anxiety because you know that there's no way it's going to end well. Something, somebody's going to jail, somebody's getting killed, but you know, you're tenuously holding on to the thread that this boy will somehow get this heart. There's yeah. a car accident at the very beginning of the movie w- across the country, which is a nice little foreshadowing yes, of, yes. of hope. Yes, you're kind of bracing yourself for something though. Yeah. You don't quite know what, so. Um, it's, it, yeah. it's, it's, you, you know, I had to watch, the second time I watched it, I liked it so much more because you know what's <laughs> gonna happen. But it's, you know, you just have this sort of ball in your stomach the whole time watching it that, that you know, this will not end well for several people. Right. So. so this movie is among a couple of films in which Denzel Washington stars alongside the actress Kimberly Elise, um, who has joked about being Washington's work wife. Deb, we can only fantasize how mm-hmm. it must be <laughs> to be Denzel's work wife. So in addition to this movie, Denzel and Kimberly um, starred in The Great Debaters, which we'll talk about in a minute, and also the remake of The Manchurian Candidate a few years back. So um, our next film, though, comes to us from 2004, and that is the film Man on Fire. Now, Talk about this, gripping. Oh, <laughs> I am telling you, if you have not seen Man on Fire, immediately download it, whatever. Find it. It's so good. Denzel Washington plays um, a former CIA officer who is in a, you know, a, 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 at rock bottom with yeah, alcohol, be like an alcoholic. Yeah. Yeah. And his friend, a fellow officer, you know, you don't call them CIA agents. I learned that in my, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> they're CIA officers. Um, right played by Christopher Walken, encourages him to take this bodyguard job in Mexico, guarding a young girl, um, just to kind of give him, Denzel Washington's character, something to wake up for, to get out of bed in the morning for. And Dakota Fanning plays the young girl, and the two of them form a fantastic bond. I mean, it's really another side of Denzel Washington to see this, you know, kind of tough, hardened government agent with this little girl who's, you know, he's nurturing and helping coach her swimming and she does end up getting abducted and he, man on fire, he just digs deep into all of his spy roots and- oh, yes, he sure does. <laughs> how to get her back and it's, it's just a great movie. It's an edge of your seat, pop the popcorn, you know, can't look away type of a movie. And you talk about the pairing of Denzel Washington and the Coda Fanning in the movie. And apparently, you know, not only did it work on camera, it also was, you know, going on behind the scenes. Denzel and the young actress reportedly bonded over ping pong during filming. That was their, you know, um, stress reliever and also Denzel would reportedly quiz the coda about state capitals in between takes so that was fun and sounds really cute and so this film was directed by the late Tony Scott who also directed Crimson Tide yes so reportedly Denzel was cast in this movie after he bumped into Tony Scott at the doctor's office Deb Um, Scott at the time had been working with Dakota Fanning on another project. And when he ran into Denzel, you know, gave him the idea that such a pairing would work. And work it did, my goodness. I mean, I I love stories like that. I've always like, you know, how come I never bump into anybody at the doctor's (laughs) office? Uh, And it would be off a role in the film. (laughs) You guys like to star in this movie. (laughs) So our next film, is from 2007 and 
really two back-to-back -back releases starring Denzel Washington in 2007. The first one is a crime drama based on the life of heroin kingpin Frank Lucas, who rose up the ranks of the Harlem mob in the late 1960s, and that is the movie American Gangster. Now, this is a this was a controversial movie. It did not get the kind of reception that I think it deserved. Um, now, here's the weird, like all the stuff you, I know you think I'm crazy that I follow all this crazy, these threads, like I'm in my basement with a whiteboard. You're a conspiracy you know, movie thread, yes. <laughs> so we talked about how Denzel Washington won the Academy Award when Russell Crowe probably should have won the Academy Award. This film stars Russell Crowe and Denzel Washington in the wake of that, directed by Ridley Scott, um, who directed Russell Crowe in Gladiator, Gladiator. the brother of Tony Scott, who directed Denzel, Denzel in, yes. in those two movies. So now we're bringing them all together for <laughs> American Gangster, which I think probably had the bar set very high when it came out with these two absolute powerhouse actors. Yeah, you <laughs> saw those names in your, yeah. And so Denzel Washington plays the heroin dealer. The, I mean, a, a heroin dealer is, 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 is not a suitable term. He's a, he's the Jeff Bezos of heroin. Drug <laughs> Lord, King yes. of heroin. Yes, yes. That's yes, uh-huh. Um, and Russell Crowe is this cop who's not a good guy, but he's an honest cop. And in a in a unit in New Jersey that is filled with corrupt police officers, he's battling with a corrupt DEA in New York City, um, and corrupt law enforcement throughout you know the bi-state area of New York and New Jersey, and he starts to suspect the Denzel Washington character and investigate him. But, uh, you know, with a lot of people on the take and a lot of people uh, being bribed and corrupt, he is struggling to catch him. And Denzel Washington's character, based on an actual drug smuggler. Oh, yes. In the 70s, who notoriously uh, shipped heroin in the coffins of dead servicemen coming back from Vietnam. So it's this big ugly, you know, uh, this, the, the crime, this manuf manufacturer of the, these drugs and the distribution. And yet there's this odd respect that these two men have for each other because they are both, I would say they both burn with a pure flame. They both are who they are. And they don't claim to be anything else in this world where everyone else is fake or not who they claim to be. So there's this begrudging respect for the two of them as the cop, Russell Crowe, tries to bring down the kingpin, Denzel yeah. Washington. It's, it's a great movie in my opinion. I, I, I liked it from the minute I saw it and I never really understood the mixed reviews it got. Um, it, it, it's not uh, that kind of, um, it doesn't follow that sort of traditional edge of your seat thriller. It's more of a catch me if you can type of a film, yeah. much yeah. darker, obviously, than, um, you know, the Leonardo DiCaprio uh, film, but that same kind of cat and mouse um, with a lot of historical um, logistics thrown in there too. So it's interesting that you mentioned, you know, we, it, this is based on a true story, although from interviews from the actual people who were involved, it wasn't really that accurate, but you know, of course it's a movie, but you hit the note about the relationship between these two men, which was really um, evident on screen. And, you know, in real life, but after it was all said and done, the two actually formed a, a relationship, a friendship. And, um, the detective, uh, Richie Roberts, served as Frank Lucas's attorney years yeah. later. And also one of the men became 
uh, godfather to the other's child. And these, so are, was, these are the characters, not Denzel and Russell. Yes, exactly, exactly. The the the, the real life people yes. behind those characters. So yeah, and and that's kind of cool that that was evident on film as well. Now, so, oh. Well, I was going to say, it's interesting to know too that Russell Crowe's captain in the police precinct is played by Ted Levine. And you might not recognize the name, well, you might, but our listeners might not, as most notoriously, he played Buffalo Bill in <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. And while I was watching Silence of the Lambs, I actually thought to myself, this guy will never work again because you'll never be able to look at him without thinking of, you know- Live down that role, yes. On its skin, or else it gets the hose again. Oh my gosh. And I mean, it's a true testament to his talent that uh, he went on to play this role very effectively. And then, and uh, I guess before that, take on the role as the police lieutenant in the TV show, Monk. Yes, that's right. Yeah. You, you, you mentioned that and I never even yeah. realized. So that's that. just a little side note. Josh Brolin is also in this film and has a, a, does a great job and is very, um, you know, he's one of the corrupt, plays one of the corrupt, uh, D, I think he's a DEA agent, but um, anyway, it's a, a rich cast of talent in addition to these two huge blockbuster actors. So it's American Gangsters, I think worth seeing. Yes, I agree, I agree. All right, so our final film not only features Denzel Washington as the star, but also behind the camera as director. And that is, again, released 2007, the film, The Great Debaters. Now this, we've talked about this movie before. It is on my list of favorites, Denzel aside, just yeah. as a great movie. It's a story of uh, Denzel plays a teacher of a debate team of a small Wiley College, uh, an all African American debate team that he coaches. And it's literally just the story of the team traveling to different colleges to compete in debate. And they are incredibly good. And while they travel through the South, they face some disturbing uh, encounters with racism and violence and um, based on a true story. Although the big flaw, and we've discussed this as well, is that in the movie, they make the final debate competition against Harvard College, which was not the case in the true story. And I don't know why they went to that extreme to make it this big Right. Take it out of the South and anyway. It's, when in fact it was against the University of Southern California. Right. Um, and, um, and it's, um, it doesn't matter. And if you don't know this, the true story, it won't bother you in the film. Uh, the bottom line is, is, is it, it's a wonderful, wonderful, inspiring story that, you know, makes you sick at some parts. Um, there's some really disturbing imagery in the film. At one point they come across a lynching and yeah, I would say the film was set in the 1930s, um, in the would, American South in the 1930s. Yeah, but it's maybe not for young kids. I, um, while it's a inspiring film, um, I certainly would PG-13 this movie for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, this film, you know, when it came out in December 2007, right around the same time, Denzel Washington announced that he was making a $1 million donation to Wiley College in Texas to reestablish the debate team. So um, that was really, really neat to hear. When, when I mean, can, can we like him anymore? It's <laughs> like, it, it, just when you think you like him the most, you could possibly like him, he does that. Exactly. So again, keep your eyes open for the release of The Little Things, and that is going to come out January 29, limited release in theaters, but most important for many of us, it will be streaming simultaneously on HBO Max. So um, there you have it. And HBO Max is really taking the streaming platforms by storm. It's 
every good show and movie is on HBO Max. I mean, I'm not, this is not a paid endorsement. I'm just, <laughs> no, just, no, it's really come in handy yeah. during these times that we can't set foot in theater. So yeah. yeah. And, and but during this time when you look, scroll through Netflix and you're like, seriously? <laughs> Come on, I've seen Netflix. That face many times. <laughs> um, all right. So, Debbie, for dessert, our signature end of the show treat, we are featuring a blockbuster of flavors and textures all combined into one. And we are making lemon blueberry gooey butter cake. But really think of it as part gooey butter cake, part cake, part cheesecake, part pie because that's what's going on here. And then you have the winning flavors of fresh lemon zest and blueberries. It's really sunshine in the winter. I, and it's delicious. It sounds fantastic. I, I, I'm gonna race to look at them. Those are all my favorite things like put together. Normally I'm not a huge gooey butter cake person because it's so sweet. You have but mentioned the that. Berries, the little tartness, it's probably fantastic. And the cool thing about this recipe is you can control the amount of sugar. So if it's asking for like, you know, a half cup of sugar, you can do it a fourth of a cup, a third of a cup, and it still works. It's still delicious. Oh, oh. that sounds great. Yes. And of course, as with all of our featured recipes on the Stir podcast, we will have this for you on gazellemagazine.com. A reminder that you can easily subscribe for free to our Gazelle Magazine channel by clicking on the Gazelle logo on your screen. This means you'll be among the first to know when a new episode of the Stir Podcast goes live. We wanna thank Debbie Baldwin for once again coming on with us um, for another binge worthy list. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Trish, that was fun. I, I talk about Denzel Washington movies till I'm blue in the face. <laughs> You're right. You're right. There were more, many more movies that we, there you go. Fan yourself. Yes. Now that the show is over. Thank you all for joining us and we will see you again next time. Bye. Bye.